Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Jasmine Jafar. For those of you that don't know, I am a lawyer and I'm also an OF OnlyFans. I can actually say OnlyFans on YouTube on most social media platforms. You actually can't use the word OnlyFans. But anyways, you guys should definitely subscribe. I plan on doing a ton of content. I know I say that every video, but I am, I'm serious. We are almost there. I moved. Um, we're getting like a space set up where I can actually film. It's gonna look really cool, but stuff is still getting delivered. And I think in like a couple weeks, we're gonna set everything up and we're gonna be official. Don't miss out on that. Make sure you're subscribed and let me know what kind of content you wanna see. I will be consistently making at least one video, if not more, a week. So today we are going to do another q and I have done one in the past. We're gonna put it up somewhere on the screen. So I got a lot of the same questions. The really like basic questions, I'm just gonna answer again but anything that required a longer response that I remember answering before will be in that video. But here we go. The common questions that I've gotten a bunch of times that I've answered a bunch of times are number one, my age, I am 28 years old. I feel like I look 28, sometimes people online think I'm younger and it's like, how could I be an attorney if I was like 22. So yes, I am 28 years old. A lot of people wanna know my ethnicity. I am 100% Persian. Both of my parents were immigrants from Iran. How tall am I? If you're a true fan, you know this because I answer this all the time. I am very short. I'm like five feet and a quarter. Sometimes I round up and I put like five one and a lot of fun like on certain posts, <laughs> on certain social media platforms just because it rhymes, but I'm actually shorter than that. I usually wear heels, like two to four inch heels just every day, so I look a little taller. Am I Muslim? A lot of people ask this. I think I answered in the last video too, I think just because of my heritage. Um, I am not, I am an atheist, and I've pretty much been an atheist like my whole life. My parents are deists, I would say, and they're maybe culturally Muslim, but ever since I could literally think, I was like, uh, and then once I got old enough to actually be able to research and read on religion and everything, I have pretty much been a hardcore atheist ever since. But that's a question a lot of people are curious about. So the answer is no, I am not Christian, I'm not Muslim, I'm an atheist. Probably the most asked question was, what is my relationship status and am I single? Yes, I am single, I have been single the whole time I have been on OnlyFans actually. Why did you choose only fans, even though you were a lawyer. A lot of people ask me like, are you actually a lawyer? Are you still a lawyer? Like, did you, some people think like, I don't have a license or I like quit like law school or something. No, I am a lawyer. I finished law school. I have a JD, took the bar, passed it, passed character and fitness, actually disclosed to character and fitness. Cause by that point I had an OnlyFans account and I told them I do. And there's like another misconception that like, if you're a lawyer, that, like you can't have an OnlyFans account. Not true. Doesn't violate any rules. So here we are. Yes, I can technically represent you if you need legal counsel in a state I'm licensed in. That doesn't mean I will. Please do not flood my DMs with your legal issues because this happens every day. <laughs> but bottom line is I'm happier this way. I didn't want to work a traditional job. I didn't want like a nine to five. I didn't want to have billable hours. I didn't want a boss. I didn't want to, you know, see my coworkers and like Fridays and be like, okay, see you Monday. Like I'm not knocking anyone who works this kind of job and a lot of people love it and they would hate to do what I do, like to run their own business or to be a content creator or to have no structure. Like there are definitely pros and cons, but I don't know why it's like so inconceivable to think like some people don't want that. And I'm one of those people. It gave me the ability to use my degree in law to actually help people in communities that I wanna help and not have to worry about using it in order to make a living. And I love this, I like this more. I, I love what I do. I feel like I'm honestly making more of an impact than I could as a lawyer. So bottom line, I'm happier, I'm freer, and I'm richer. So all around win. What motivates you to progress in your career? Um, kind of following up on the last question, I like this. I genuinely like what I do. I liked learning and, and like, 
developing kind of those critical thinking skills you do in law school and being a lawyer, but I didn't like the actual work like at all. Whereas with this, I actually do like what I do. I love being on OnlyFans. I love doing this kind of content, although I'm still a little uncomfortable. I'm still getting used to it, but I know that this is something I actually want to do and it's something that makes me happy. So it's easier to be motivated doing this versus what I used to be doing. I used to be someone that only did things when I had to do them last minute at that. Threesome, question mark. So these questions are not in order. They were not categorized in any particular way, so they're gonna be kind of all over the place. I have had them before, and I would only be comfortable having at this time um, female, female, male, instead of male, male, female. Do you film with others on your OnlyFans? Yes, I do. I think this has changed since the last Q&A we did. I think at that time I hadn't done that yet, but I officially have full tapes on my OnlyFans, like dozens at this point. Would you sell your eggs? It's like this was a really random question. I personally wouldn't sell my eggs. I think I would just feel very weird about it. I'm not saying that this is, you know, something that everyone needs to feel. I think people who want to donate their eggs should, but I, I wouldn't. Are your melons real? I think I answered this in my last video. I pretty much answer this every time I breathe online. Yes, they are real. Pretty well-known fact on the internet. Pretty obvious if you know where to click. You're like two clicks away from having that confirmed. Would you ever join the mainstream porn industry? No, I wouldn't. I love like the OnlyFans model. I think it's much better for creators and you see a lot of people moving from mainstream porn over to like OnlyFans, you don't see a lot of movement in the other direction. And I think that's for a good reason. Are you straight? Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I feel like I'm like a 15 year old struggling with my sexuality. Yeah, I would say I'm straight. I'm just bi curious also. We'll say that. Do you work out or how do you maintain your figure? A lot of it is genetic. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I didn't work out and get huge tits. I've always kind of had a small waist. Hips are also very hard to build in the gym, but I do work out. This is probably was not as much the case in my last Q&A, depending on when it was, but now I work out with a trainer two to three times a week, except I haven't gone for like two weeks because I had food poisoning like a week and a half ago and it messed me up for a solid week. But I'm actually going back tomorrow and I'm really excited, so yes. How much more does OnlyFans pay over being a lawyer? A lot, okay? We're making like hardcore like partner money. <laughs> I will say that I am making what most at this point I'd be like a second year associate make in like a month or like almost as much, definitely within two months. So yeah, a lot more money. Body count. I got this question like, I wanna say like 15 times and I ignored most of them and I was like, you know what? Let me just, let me just talk about this. If you think someone's body count is pertinent information and I know this is like a huge topic of discussion in like the red pill world, which I've been like exploring a little because I am inundated with their ideas and the rhetoric in, not on my like OnlyFans or anywhere where people are a little bit more mature. I'd say Reddit too, but like Instagram, TikTok kind of like I wanna say the lower IQ social media platforms, mm, don't come for me. I see a lot of it, and so I've been like looking at this kind of content, and it, it's crazy, you guys. If you care about this, you're a silly person. Like, if you're a fully formed human being, I just, I never even see this. I've never in my 28 years been with a single human being or interacted with a single human being who's even asked this or, or thought about this, at least in any way that I could conceive or, or, or notice. I am gonna answer it because. I think it's another opportunity to kind of combat stereotypes. My body count's fairly low. It's in the single digits and I'm 28 years old. Um, for the majority of my life, I lived at home with my parents and I came from a strict Middle Eastern household. Even now, if I go stay with my parents, I pretty much have to be home by like 11 p.m. So I don't know where, wh when I would have procured like <laughs> a, a high body count for most of my life. But, irrespective of that like even a couple years ago before i had an only fans and you know you guys i could have been considered a low value that's the term they like woman um because you know two years ago i didn't have an only i didn't have an instagram i was such a little good girl i was a lawyer um low body count i think being a lawyer wasn't a good thing i think being highly educated seems to be like an impediment to being valuable in this in this world um i can i can see why even at that time, never spoken, entertained somebody who thought like this. Because I would be like, their thinking is either radically underdeveloped, 
juvenile, they're insecure, or I mean, best case scenario, they just have very different values than me. They may be religious or they may for some reason value this archaic notion of like sexual purity and me and that person would not be compatible because those were never my values. What's one thing that makes you proud of yourself? I'm not afraid to break the mold and take a path that is different than the one society deems better or acceptable for me. I'm not afraid to be happy. That's what I'll say. When was your last relationship? 2020, I think. Yeah, I've answered this multiple times on lives, on, you know, previous, I think like TikToks maybe, maybe not in my last Q&A, but this is a question I get way, way too often. Like this shouldn't even be a question people ask, but I, I get this quite a bit. If you met a guy and you really liked him and he wanted you to stop OnlyFans, would you? Once and for all, no, I would not stop OnlyFans. This question by, in itself, is not possible. I wouldn't like somebody, I wouldn't really like somebody who had an issue with this. Like, do you guys not date people who share your values and like have a similar belief system? Like, and people are like, oh, no, no, what if you like really liked him? Like, that's like saying, what if you really liked someone who had nothing, like didn't have the traits that you like in a human being? No, like you, you are attracted to people that share your values, or you should be. And if a guy that I met, had an issue with this, that's fine. I'm not saying that he's, you know, a bad person or anything. Everyone has the right to like the things that they like, but we wouldn't be compatible and I wouldn't entertain him. Also, I wanna say a lot of the questions I got, not surprisingly, were very explicit. I cannot answer those kind of questions on here, but I will let you know that every Monday, usually I go live on my OnlyFans page and you guys can kind of ask me anything over there. We are far less restricted uh, physically. That's all I'll say. And we are far less restricted verbally as well. Well, so you can ask me anything on there. If that's something you're interested in, join my OnlyFans. I do that once a week. Do you respond back to fans? That's the next question. Um, kind of piggybacking off of what I said earlier. Yes, I am very involved with interactions with my fans. I don't work with an agency. I don't work with anyone. I run my own page. So I am looking at all the messages. I am doing all the interacting with fans, even on my other social media, like YouTube in particular. I always look at the comments. I sometimes don't on Instagram and TikTok if I'm too busy, but I, I try to look at them as often as possible and respond. I like to see what you guys are thinking and saying, and I'm not one of those people where negativity online bothers me because I'm a lawyer and I'm combative and I want to sit, I want to have a conversation with everyone who writes something negative on my, like I actually do. And I wish that was feasible, but it's not, which I guess would eliminate a lot. When did you realize you want to quit law to do only fans? Again, I didn't quit law, but I quit my job where I was working as a full-time attorney, like in a traditional sense, a little over a year ago now, or maybe about a year ago. Three tips for developing critical thinking skills in the age of social media and the misinformation all over it. This is my favorite question. When you're navigating the world of social media, this is just a good principle in my opinion to have in general, but especially online, if you come across like a statistic or a post, the more you wanna believe something, the more skeptical you should be. And this is a way that you can kind of, we all have confirmation bias as human beings and we all have a predisposition to wanting or believing or being more likely to believe things that already match our worldview. When you come across that kind of stuff, you're more likely to be like, oh yeah, somebody's said this, so this is the statistic that's on Twitter, and so I'm just gonna retweet it, and if you see something that goes against your, your worldview, you're more likely to say, oh, that's fake news, whatever. So I think a good practice is, if it's something you really wanna believe, especially if it's um, anything that is pertaining to actual facts about an issue, make sure you do your research. All right, the next, number two is, Always diversify, mix up the kind of content that you consume, again, to make sure you don't fall into that confirmation bias. I definitely make it a point, like I listen to just as many like political pundits that I disagree with, like on the far right, I would say I'm libertarian left, even though it can be annoying and I, and I do have to at least have like a base, like it has to be somewhat, like the, the red pill stuff for instance, like I, I feel like I need to read a very, very like difficult, dense book every time I listen to them after to like regulate, equalize my brain. But in general, I try to listen to a ton of content I disagree with 
as well as content that I agree with and kind of everything in between. It's actually funny because sometimes I'll be like driving or in a drive through and I'm listening to something like that and like then I'll pull up and I'll turn it down because <laughs> I, I don't care if people have opinions on what I actually believe. I don't want it to seem like I am endorsing opinions and, and worldviews that I actually find deeply immoral and just repulsive. I'm listening to this because I'm trying to make sure that I'm not falling into confirmation bias, but people aren't gonna know that. And then number three kind of goes off of that, which is always be able to know the best arguments against your kind of opinion, whatever it is. You can just pick anything, like abortion. Make sure you can steel man your opponent's viewpoint and make sure you know the best arguments against your case so that you are better able to argue and persuade, in my opinion. Has it boosted your confidence knowing many people find you attractive? No. <laughs> so I feel attractive, but honestly, guys, being online is so new to me. Like, cause I, like I said, I never had social media. Part of the reason for that is I never found myself photogenic. I don't like the way I look on camera. I don't ever watch these videos back because I'm just like, uh, but I think I'm attractive in person. I guess it's nice that like, a lot of you guys only see me online and you still find me attractive, but like, I'm always like, what are you guys seeing? <laughs> so not really. Do you speak any other languages? I speak Farsi and I like basic Spanish, if that, if I remember anything. What are your goals? And it's a short term and long term. I make it a point to kind of pursue my intrinsic goals over extrinsic and an extrinsic goal is like, something that has like a result that's visible to the world or even you know like i want to make 10 million dollars i want to do this by the end of the year i want to be able to run a mile in however many minutes by the end of the year i want to buy this house i want to buy this car those are extrinsic um, goals when you pursue your intrinsic goals that has to do more with like the relationship with yourself and it doesn't have like a result that again you can like show to the world for me building that relationship with myself is something i'm really working on building those meaningful relationship with other relationships with other people like getting outside more feeling like i'm more in tune with nature because i know that's just such a big key component to being an overall happy person. Those are things I'm working on, trying to weed out any values that I don't think are serving me and focus on the things that are really important. Those are my goals. I don't, I don't place my worth, especially on any kind of extrinsic goal. Not saying those things are bad, but studies have shown repeatedly that when people chase those things, like when people meet their extrinsic goals, they're, they're, it doesn't usually make them happy, right? You become a part of the hedonic treadmill. There's just like a bunch of research on that, which isn't difficult to believe versus when people are more intrinsically motivated and like work on their intrinsic goals that tends to lead to sustained overall happiness and, um, increased well-being. So have you ever had sex with a fan? No. What has been the most challenging part of changing careers? So the most challenging part for me, this is such an easy one, is all of the restrictions and discrimination sex workers face. I don't care what like people think or like commenters, but how we're treated by the law. You know, when we have legislation like SESTA FOSTA, a lot of stuff that is potentially going to be passed now, you know, like COSA, child safety, you know, whatever this, this stuff that they, it's under the guise of those things that actually don't serve those goals and inhibit our freedoms and take away our liberties and obviously disproportionately negatively impact groups like sex workers, how we're treated by platforms, constantly banned, constantly deplatformed. Those are things that really bother me because I obviously came from a profession where it seemed like you know, um, it was a respected profession. We didn't, it didn't seem like the world was against us as, as lawyers. Um, we're obviously as sex workers. It seems like we're constantly fighting these legal battles and even like social battles, which is tiring. That's the most challenging part, but it also motivates me to be like an activist for this, to be a voice for this, to put my time and energy into serving this cause. What makes you feel better when you're sad? I like to talk a lot. Like I can talk anyone's ear off and I'm the type of person that I can solve my own problems kind of a lot of the time by vocalizing them. So if you're a close friend of mine or a family member, you know that I'm the type of person when I'm sad, I don't even really want you to say anything. I just want you to sit there while I figure things out. 
out because my brain is usually pretty, there's a lot going on. It's really hard for me to actually shut it off. Like I'm practicing a lot of that mindfulness meditation um, stuff and that has been helping. It's hard for me to even vocalize a lot of times my thoughts, which is why this kind of stuff is kind of actually difficult for me. It's much easier for me to write even in law school. Like I could write a mean essay killer paper, but I never wanted to do like moot court or anything because it was hard for me to do that part. But I do like to talk when I feel comfortable. What size shoes do you wear? So I wear a woman's like five and a half. Like I said, I'm pretty small. Did the bar exam make you cry? Didn't make me cry, but it was still not fun. And I remember thinking during it, like I better pass this first time because I'm not redoing this. And good thing I did because ugh, it's, what is it like a 12 hour exam? Is there a 12 or 16? I forgot. It's two days and you like do a certain time, break a certain time. And then do you do that again? Uh, I took it when it was still like COVID-y time. So I got to take it remote, which was better, but I'm not, I wouldn't do that again. Do you ever plan on going back to law? Not in a traditional sense, like not like, you know, working in a law firm for somebody else, but I do want to use my degree eventually down the line to advocate for sex workers, maybe start a nonprofit. A lot of my friends from law school are actually really interested in this. I do want to use my experiences and expertise and like connections with other very passionate, amazing people to make an impact. So stay tuned. Height and weight. Okay, I said my height, I'm five foot and I am 126, 27 pounds. If you guys followed me when I first started, kind of like OnlyFans, I was at that time like 103. So I've gained weight, um, but I like it. And in fact, this last weekend, this last week when I had food poisoning for literally the first time in my life and I lost weight, I was like, just waiting to get my appetite back so I could gain it back because I like myself a little thicker. Who is the guy you make your tapes with? This was also a common question. Um, he's just my friend. So we have sex, we're friends, it works out. Do you think AI is a threat to OnlyFans and sex workers? Yes and no. I think there is a portion of people who consume this kind of content, whether it be porn or, or content on OnlyFans that would, that that AI would be very appealing to and they would feel like they get their kind of fix from that. But I think there is probably a bigger portion of people who, like a bigger percentage who actually part of the appeal of OnlyFans and why a lot of people prefer to go on OnlyFans to consume this kind of content over traditional corn is because they like the natural human connection. They like to feel like there is a real person there. Um, the biggest creators on OnlyFans a lot of times show there are, are social media personalities or streamers. You see their personalities and that's what makes them so attractive. I can say for me and my fans, um, they love that I sit around and talk to them and they get to see like the real me. And that's not going to be replaced by AI, at least I think anytime soon. People want authenticity and AI may be able to replicate it well, but I think there's something like people actually want the connection. I don't think it's a threat at least anytime soon. One piece of advice you would give to others. Everyone is full of shit. Nobody has the answers. So live your life for you and do what makes you happy. What kind of law did you study? I don't know if I answered this in my last Q and A or somewhere else, but you don't really study a certain kind of law necessarily when you go to law school. Now you can like get a certificate in something, but in general, um, like you have your required classes your first year and then your second and third year, you can kind of take whatever you want, but you don't have to like specialize in anything. And a lot of times people kind of focus on their interests and they take classes that are gonna be tested on the bar, like evidence, et cetera. So you don't really specialize until you start practicing and learning a specific area of, of the law. Are OnlyFans creators sex workers? Please include citations to authoritative sources. So this was written by another lawyer. <laughs> you can tell. Are OnlyFans creators sex workers? I would say yes, but if we were gonna do a full analysis, I guess the question is, do OnlyFans creators fall under the definition of sex work? And then we would look up the definition of sex work. So let's do it together.
Sex workers are adults. This is just one definition. Sex workers are adults who receive money or goods in exchange for consensual sexual services or erotic performances, either regularly or occasionally. So let's apply that rule to the facts here. Um, as an OnlyFans creator, I would argue that I am someone who definitely receives money in exchange for um, consensual sexual services. I would say digitally, I sell my sexual services online and I do so regularly. I guess the counter to that you could maybe argue is that a digital sex worker um, isn't providing any sexual service. Like it would be, it would hinge on the word service, but I would say like, like Netflix provides a streaming service. It's still a service. So yes. What are you currently reading? I'm reading a book called Sex and the Constitution. <laughs> so kind of combining my two, two worlds. Uh, what turns you on the most? What turns me on the most is people who are confident in themselves, irrespective of how society views them. You know, people who are just like, like, okay, a few days ago, I was, I took a little edible and I uh, went to like an Italian restaurant by myself. When people ask, why did you quit your job? It's because I wanted to do shit like this on a random fucking Tuesday evening, okay? And so I went and I sat in this restaurant and there was this server who I was like in love with. Like he just, the way he carried himself, he was probably like in his thirties, like average looking guy, but like, I was just sitting there because I was by myself watching him. And I know I was a little out of it, but I actually, I wasn't that out of it. So that wasn't why, but just how nice he was to everyone. And you could tell he wasn't just nice. Like you can tell people are nice because they're trying to do their job. Like he just genuinely cared. He, he was asking everybody questions. He wanted to help everybody. He was such a hard worker. You could just tell he was confident and you can just tell he was happy. Being happy is so attractive like people who are positive and happy because obviously when you're around those people that energy that reflects on to you and you are more likely to be be those things so honestly if that server had asked me for my number i would have given it to him and i usually would never in general i'm not somebody that like gives out my number like in public randomly to strangers but i would have to him he didn't ask but <laughs> if he would have i would have given it to him um, you know, all this talk from this Red Bull community of high value, whatever, like happiness is high value. It's not impressive when somebody who has a lot of the things that society tells you should make you happy. A lot of times those people are not confident at all, to be honest with you. But even if they were, like, it's like, okay, you know, um, but somebody who is just internally happy, positive, it, it's, it's so sexy. So. I'd say that. Do you plan on having kids? Yes, probably, but like in my mid to late thirties. And I know this is one of like the, you know, people who don't like me are gonna be like, you can't have kids, you can't do that. Like you're not gonna be able to like, I'll be fine. <laughs> there are ways. And I find that find, having kids old later in life, I think is better for you. And it seems to be better from the, for the child based on all the available data that we have. So that is my plan. How short is the shortest duty with date? I, I did see a lot of questions about height. Guys, it, it doesn't really matter. I'm not gonna say that like being tall isn't attractive. I've really liked guys who were short. My dad's really short. It's not as big of a deal as you guys make it out to be. If you're sitting there thinking your height is is the biggest obstacle to you being happy or, 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 you know, succeeding in the world. It's not. And that's not saying like, you know, being tall doesn't come with benefits and um, you may be viewed in a, you know, different way by certain, you know, by society. I'm not saying that, but it's not as big of a deal as I'm, as people online make it out to be. At least in my opinion, I have dated short guys. I've dated tall guys. Have you ever been in a fight? Uh, no. <laughs> Like a physical fight? No. I actually got into one in the sixth grade. We can do a story time on that, but since then, no. Do you get recognized when you go out? Not really. Like you guys, I'm not like fucking Beyonce over here. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not that well known. Uh, there's been a couple times and also maybe people have and I haven't uh, like noticed. On some social media platforms, I have like you know, millions of followers at this point. So it, it's not like, well, also I don't really go many places. Maybe people have and they 
don't come up to me and a few times they have. Has your OnlyFans career affected your personal relationships or hurt your ability to meet new people? Um, it hasn't affected my personal relationships at all. Um, the only people in my life who disapproved of my decision were my parents initially, but now we're totally fine. Meeting new people, I guess the only way it's kind of harm hurt that is I work from home and I'm home most of the time. So I'm not out meeting new people as often as I was kind of forced to when I worked a, a normal job where I had to go in the office and it hasn't affected my dating life. That's a question I get asked all the time. I wouldn't interact with people or, or had an issue with me being on OnlyFans and there are plenty of other people in the world. So we're not experiencing a shortage over here. When did you begin to develop curves? I did a whole video on this. We'll put it somewhere here, how I actually developed curves very young and that did affect things for me at school, in middle school, so watch that video. What kind of books do you like? I like philosophy and psychology. So kind of anything related to those. Right now I said I was reading Sex and the Constitution. I like things, I like books where I can learn things. I'm not really a big fiction reader. If I wanna indulge in a story, I will watch a TV show. But when I'm reading, I like to learn. So yeah, and uh, let's see. I think this video has been long enough, so I'm gonna end it there. But if you guys want me to do more videos in the future, or if you have more questions and it's not gonna take me too long to answer them, you guys can leave them below. Yeah, make sure you're subscribed and I will see you next time.